Welcome. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like to do is show you how to graph the equation of ellipse uh, when I'm given x squared equals 9 over 4 um, plus y squared equals 25 over 4 equals 1. Now, again, when we're graphing, we, the first thing we want to do is identify our center, which is in the form of h comma k. Now, remember, our general form is x minus h squared, y minus k squared. Well, since I see no numbers that I'm subtracting from x and y, I can reason that my center is going to be at 0, 0. And that's very nice. Um, the next thing is I need to determine my a squared and my b squared. Now remember, when we're dealing with an ellipse, the a squared is going to be the larger of your two values. Um, and you can see we both have fractions, but let's just go and take a look. You know, what is going to be your larger fraction? Well, they both have a denominator of 4. And since they both have a denominator here of 4, you can see that um, 25 over 4 would be larger than 9 over 4. So my a squared is going to be 25 over 4. And my b squared is going to be 9 over 4. Therefore, to solve for a, I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and I'd get 5 halves. And when I solve for b, I would get 3 halves, which you can obviously see a is going to be larger than b. Uh, the last thing we want to do is figure out what c squared is. Now remember, there's a relationship for c squared. The relationship is a squared minus b squared. So c squared equals uh, 25 over 4 minus 9 over 4, which equals 16 over 4. Um, so therefore, c, ah, not let's write equals. Let's write a colon. So their c is going to um, equal 4 halves, which is equal to 2. OK. So now I've figured out what a, b, and c are. Now I need to see and you kind of remember, well, how do I know what a, b, and c are? Oh, actually, maybe I kind of went too fast. How do you know those are a, b's, and c's? Um, remember, since the larger number in my term is under my y, let's go over our general form. So it's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals 1. Well, now remember, since the larger number is under the y, that's going to be my a squared and my b squared. We don't have a c squared in there, but so to quickly go through this, that's how I figured out h and k were 0. That's how I said that was a squared, and that's how I said that was b squared. Because remember, the a squared um, is always going to be your larger of your two numbers when dealing with an ellipse. All right, so now we know a, b, and c. We know the center. Now we can start graphing it. Okay. So we say here is the center. And now remember, a is the distance from the center to the vertice. And since we know that my a is under my y, we know that that's going to be going vertical, right? The major axis is vertical. And that's very important for us to understand. Whenever the a squared is under the y, that means the larger of two numbers under y, that means my major axis is vertical. And that's where your center, your vertices, and your foci all lie. Um, when you'll have when the larger number would be under the x squared, let's say they're swaps, then my major axis would be horizontal. So anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at here. Um, so I know 5 halves. Since it's vertical, that's going to be going up or down. Now 5 halves, you can rewrite, if you want to think of this in terms, that's the same thing as 2.5. right? So a lot of you, when graphing, um, might be easier in saying, oh, OK, 1, 2, 2.5. So that's one vertice. Now remember, um, it goes up, and it's also going to go down. So 1, 2. So therefore, therefore, there's my two vertices. Now, that's the distance of A. B is on your minor axis, which is perpendicular to your major axis. And B is 3 halves, which is 1 and 1 third. Um, so, oh, I'm sorry, not 1 and 1 third. 3, yeah, 2, 1 and 1 and a half. So it would be 1.5, wow. OK, um, sorry about that. Um, get it. So that's going to be 1 and 1 half. So there's my covertice. That's my covertice. Um, and then lastly, we need to determine our fo uh, fo foci, which has a distance of 2. So again, remember the foci, the vertices, and the center are all on your major axis, which is vertical. So I'm going to go up 2 and down 2. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, now we can just kind of graph going through the co-vertices and the vertices. And there's your lovely graph. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph an ellipse um, when given fractions uh, for your a squared and your b squared with a center at 0, 0. Thanks.
Huah.